Hi, I'm Brian Clark. I'm a producer and guitarist. Hi, I'm Adam Fleur, session guitar player, touring guitar player. And we're coming to you today from Rainfeather Studios based in Nashville, Tennessee, to demonstrate four proven miking techniques for acoustic guitar. There are two ways to address a microphone. You can either address it from the side where the capsule is, as in this case. So when I speak, the sound is going to be entering into the microphone from this direction. Or you can have what we call a top address microphone, which means that the capsule is oriented here. So it needs to be pointing towards the sound source. These are important things to keep in mind as we move through these four techniques. The first technique that we're going to look at is the XY technique. This is a stereo miking technique, which means it involves two microphones. In this case, we're going to aim one capsule in one direction relative to the sound source and pair it as closely as possible with another microphone aimed in another direction. This is going to increase our stereo field. Now I've set up two matched pairs of Audio-Technica 4040s. These are large diaphragm condenser mics that are side addressed and we've put them at 90 degrees relative to each other. Okay, so Adam's here with me and we're going to demonstrate this technique. So just to reiterate and make it very clear, the sound source and the way that the microphones are set up, I'm aiming it right at the 14th fret. That is the center of the sound source. So we're going to be picking up everything from here all the way to basically the headstock as he plays. We're going to have a nice stereo image. Thing to keep in mind is, is the closer you get to the microphones, the less width you're going to achieve. So it's good to be back a ways. One thing that I'd like to emphasize is when you use an XY miking technique, make sure that they are matched pairs of the same model and make of microphone. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of phasing. <laughs> Now we're going to take the microphones that are oriented at a 90 degree angle and widen it so you have a greater stereo image. The next stereo miking technique that we want to demonstrate is spaced pairs. Whereas before we had XY where the capsules were very close together, now we're moving them far apart to capture a stereo image. And in general, most people will rely on what they call a three to one rule, meaning that where one capsule is for one microphone relative to a sound source, you're going to space the other one approximately three lengths away. This minimizes phase cancellation. But one small note, you might actually like some phase cancellation, so let your ear be the final judge. Now for this example, we've switched microphones and we're using two small diaphragm condenser tube microphones and they are top address and both of them are cardioid patterns. Now in this example, we're going to violate the three to one rule. If you look at the distance between the capsule and the sound source, you can see that relative to where the second capsule is, it's nowhere near three times the distance. And because I've aimed this at the sound hole, we're going to get much more of a mid-range bump. And that may be the sound that you're looking for. For our next technique, we're going to get rid of stereo for a moment and go back to the oldest of all mic techniques, mono. And what better way to celebrate that than by using a vintage 1934 RCA Veracoustic ribbon mic. It's a mono microphone. It even still has the call letters from the original radio station on it. When doing mono, it's important to remember that 
you're just using one microphone. So you're getting one sound source. And that needs to be dealt with very carefully. So make sure that you get the sound that you're really wanting when using one microphone. Personally, it's one of my favorites. Now for this particular example, I placed the microphone at about 12, 14 inches away from the body of the guitar and basically aiming somewhere a little above the 12th fret. I just let my ears be the judge. And it's not uncommon when using a mono, a mono source to just gently move the microphone back and forth on a plane until you finally decide that's the sound that I want. So don't be afraid to experiment with that. All right, now what I've done is move the microphone back towards the bridge. And this is also where the resonator is on this particular type of guitar. So we're going to get a lot more mid-range in this example. For our last example, we're going to look at mid-side. Now what we're going to do is use two microphones to get another stereo image, but in this case, we're going to do something very, very specific to this technique alone. When using mid-side technique, you want to have two different microphones with different pickup patterns. In this case, we have a cardioid microphone on the top that's going to capture the sound source directly in front of it where the player is going to be seated. And then we have a figure eight pattern below it that's going to capture sound to the left and to the right of the center image. For this example, we're going to be using a Peluso P28, which is a small diaphragm tube condenser cardioid based microphone, and a Roger Cloud JRS44, which has a fixed figure eight. It's a ribbon mic. Now we're not done yet. Remember that we had two microphones, one pointed directly at the guitar that had a cardioid pattern, and the other one that had a figure eight that was capturing everything that was happening to the left and to the right. Now we have to go back into our DAW software and we have to duplicate the track that was recorded with a figure eight pattern. So what we have in blue is the cardioid mic that was pointed directly at the guitar, and beneath it in red we have the figure eight microphone. This is the track we're going to focus on. And what we're going to do now is merely copy it and paste it into an empty track area. What you have to do next is take the original figure eight track, pan it hard left, and take our newly copied track and pan it hard right, and very important here, you have to put it out of phase. So here's our original figure eight track in red. We're going to pan it hard left and here's our copied track in green, and we're going to pan it hard right, and we're also going to flip the phase switch. Now we're ready to listen. So I'm going to start the example by just using the mic that was pointed directly at the guitar, and then as the music progresses, I will gently fade in our panned tracks, and you'll hear the stereo image widen considerably. So we demonstrated four tried and true techniques for miking and recording acoustic guitars. By no means have we exhausted all the possibilities, and in fact, it should just be a jumping off point for you to do your own experimentation and come up with sounds that you really like. So for Premier Guitar, I'm Brian Clark. I'm Adam Fleur. We'll see you next time. <laughs>